So this is a really odd topic, and it's one that I honestly don't even know where it came from, so I apologize for that, but what I will say is that we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, and we're also talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're going over a player that might actually be on the Blue Jackets' radar, or at least according to Jeff Merrick, he would not be surprised if that player was on the Blue Jackets' radar. And he's a player that's been a part of the Blue Jacket system before, which adds another layer of peculiarity to this conversation. So, without further ado, let's talk about Montreal Canadiens forward Josh Anderson. And just to acknowledge all of the trade discussions that have been thrown around about this guy the past few days, I honestly have no idea where this came from, but... Apparently, after Evander Kane went out there in the postseason and showed off how power forwards getting goals are quite valuable assets in the NHL, we started to see more conversations pop up about Josh Anderson because, in a way, he's somewhat of a similar mold player, except without all the gambling issues and spousal abusal issues as well. So, if we go over to Josh Anderson and we review his entire profile, 28 years old, 6'3", 227 as a right-handed forward. He is signed till 2027, making $5.5 million a year. That contract might also be a pretty big contribution as to why we're even having these discussions in the first place, because Josh Anderson, as a guy who is in the latter half of his 20s, entering his early 30s, and who is going to be, what is that, 33 by the time his contract expires? Josh Anderson posted up 32 points in 69 games this season and 19 goals, so he almost had a 20-goal year. He pretty much would have had a 20-goal year had he played all 82 games. And as a guy playing on a bad Montreal Canadiens squad, there has apparently been a big surge of interest for this player, as we said, ever since Evander Kane did his thing and teams started to recognize that power forwards like Josh Anderson actually do have a place in the league. Which is why we have been talking about teams like the Oilers potentially being involved. There are other teams getting tossed around in there. There's New Jersey, etc., etc. But, like, it's just so difficult to pinpoint where these rumors started that I'm kind of feeling a little bit disoriented going back and forth trying to find, okay, who the heck started this Josh Anderson thing? Either way, we're going over onto the Jeff Merrick show to go over what Merrick and Friedman each talked about when it comes to this player as well as what other teams could potentially be interested Merrick on a show talking Josh Anderson. As wild as this sounds, I've always wondered about Columbus trying to get him back. As I look at that team and what that team needs, I've always wondered about Columbus saying, I wonder if we can get Josh Anderson back. Elliot Friedman then replied saying this, I haven't heard about Columbus so much specifically, but there's no question that Montreal is being asked about Anderson, and that drives up the price. Now, maybe driving up the price isn't a bad thing. Maybe that's the best case scenario over here. This is what Kent Hughes said earlier in the week after the Shea Weber trade. He said this regarding Josh Anderson. It's not my intention to trade Josh Anderson, but I won't turn away from any opportunity to make this team better. His phone has been ringing more and more and that he expects activity to pick up. Now, I get what you can say. Oh, it's kind of interesting that they're saying that Josh Anderson, who is a 20-goal guy, he's arguably a 25-goal guy in a full 82-game season. He's a player who had 32 points on a bad Canadian squad. Let's say for the sake of argument, he's a 40-point player. He had near 30 goals in 2019, and if you get a guy who can score in the 25-30 goal range at $5.5 million a year till the end of 2027, that's not that bad. How are you going to go out there and say that getting rid of Josh Anderson could make the team better? And it honestly comes down to a few things. Firstly, what is the magnitude of the assets you would be getting back in a Josh Anderson trade? If it's a first-round pick, if it's a prospect, if it's whatever, whatever, there is value there. And you could debate that the Montreal Canadiens' window to contend is not supposed to be any time in the short-term future. It's not going to be right now, when Caulfield is still trying to break his way into the NHL. And I say it like that because last season, Dominic Ducharme kind of tanked the half of the season that he was here. Canadians fans are still looking to see more growth out of Caulfield. They're still looking to see more growth out of guys like Romanov, Jordan Harris, Caden Gooley eventually when he makes the team, and I guess you could say Nick Suzuki as well. We know he's already really good, but we all know he can be better. Furthermore, there's a first overall pick that's going to be suiting up in Montreal next season, and it's not like that guy is going to make an immediate contribution to making the Habs a solidified cup contender. At least, not right away. So, this team and their timeline arguably is not in the short term. You could say it's probably going to take a few more years before the Canadians are quote-unquote competitive again, and if next season they're really bad, they could realistically get Connor Bedard as well. 
So I could totally get the argument that Ken Hughes is saying when he says, okay, if we trade away Josh Anderson, if we get a whole bunch of younger assets, guys that might collectively be as good, if not maybe better than Josh Anderson in terms of overall value to the team, why not trade away Josh Anderson to a team that's already in the playoffs? or that should be a playoff team, and that could use a push from a power forward like Josh Anderson, a guy who could streak down the wings, cut into the middle, and just snipe a puck up high. A guy who really has some great straight line speed with the puck, and he gets a lot of his goals in the same way. A guy who isn't really the most talented playmaker, nor the most finesse player out there, but who is just an absolute hound on the puck when he has it, and he forces a lot of goals to go his way because of it. The question is, how long is Josh Anderson going to be able to play at the way that he is playing, and would he be a lot more better served using this talent on a team that could use him in the playoffs rather than a Montreal squad that is still transitioning to younger players. I mean, that's not really a bad thing to say, right? You're going from a center core of Nick Suzuki, Jake Evans, Ryan Paling to, let's say, Nick Suzuki, Shane Wright, and whoever else is going to be there. You're getting younger in that respect. And Josh Anderson is 28 years old, so who knows if this kind of guy can fetch a lot of value on the trade market. It's just really interesting if Columbus is the team you want to talk about, though, because as we noted, Josh Anderson was a former Blue Jacket. He was drafted by Columbus back in 2012. He had spent years developing in that system, eventually becoming a 47-point guy, a 27-goal guy in 2018-19, near 30 goals right there. But eventually, when Josh Anderson became an RFA, there was a weird conversation going on about the Blue Jackets not wanting to get a lot of term on that contract. This is because in the season before he needed the contract re-signing, he only played 26 games and he had four points. He was coming off a really bad injury, it really just took him out for a good chunk of the year, and he definitely wasn't himself when he suited back up in Columbus in that last season. So the term that Josh Anderson was looking for wasn't necessarily something the Blue Jackets would have been comfortable with, which is why they traded Anderson away to Montreal in exchange for the signing rights to fellow RFA Max Domi, who eventually signed a short-term deal. He got sent over to Carolina, and now he's a free agent. You know the story over there. But Josh Anderson got the money in the term that he wanted from Mark Bergevin immediately after getting acquired by the Habs. Five and a half million dollars till the end of 2027, which was seen as a pretty big risk back when it was made, mostly because there was some uncertainty about his ability to be able to play. Now, there were a lot of people coming out there. Anderson himself said that he was healthy, and the agent, I believe, made a few statements here and there saying that he was healthy, and Mark Bergevin, I think, even said something too. But eventually, it sort of paid off, because now we know that Josh Anderson is a legit NHL player, probably one who's a bit better than 32 points in 69 games would indicate, mostly because he was playing on Montreal in this previous season. If you play someone on any other team, you could debate he produces a lot more, so who knows what exactly the future holds for Anderson. I could understand, though, why Jeff Merrick is saying Columbus might be the team that would want him back. Firstly, the uncertainty that you had when he was signing the contract in the first place is not really there anymore, because you know he's actually good enough to play in the NHL once again. Secondly, when it comes to primetime snipers, I mean, the Blue Jackets have a lot of those already. Cole Sillinger is in the system. You guys got Igor Chinikov, who is looking to become more of his own as the years go on. Gustav Nyquist is still on the Columbus Blue Jackets. You have Voracek now, who is a very good playmaker. Oliver Bjorkstrand, Patrick Laine. These are some really good goal-scoring players over there. And for Josh Anderson, even though he's not necessarily the primetime sniper like Patrick Laine is, there's a very good straight line aspect to Anderson's game, a north-south element that not too many players out there can possess that makes him unique amongst other offensive threats in the NHL. So maybe Columbus is that team. Who really knows? We've seen rumors popping up about Edmonton because of the Evander Kane replacement situation. As we said, New Jersey's in there too. We can make a whole bunch of videos talking about all the hypothetical Josh Anderson trade scenarios that have been popping up over the past few weeks. But if you are a Montreal Canadiens fan, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Josh Anderson. Should the Montreal Canadiens trade this guy away? If the package in return is a first round pick and a pretty good B tier prospect, is that something you would be interested in getting? I know you could say, hey, if you get a first round pick, you would probably be pretty lucky if your first round pick eventually becomes a player like Josh Anderson. So why the heck would you want to trade away Josh Anderson? It's all about the windows, man, the window of opportunity, the timelines. Who's to say that Josh Anderson is going to be as effective as he enters his early 30s as the Canadians grow up and older? 
I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's a fair concern to have. Which is why, if you take a look at Ken Hughes and what he had to say about trading Josh Anderson away, as long as it improves the team, he's not going to shy away. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Columbus, Josh Anderson, a potential trade. I hope you enjoyed this British Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>